Well, good afternoon. Um, I have the um, honor to brief the Security Council today on the situation in Libya, on the political, the military, but also the economic uh, situation in Libya. Um, I'm particularly worried at this stage uh, about the situation uh, in the south, about the fighting which is going on, the internal displacements taking place, uh, the humanitarian situation, the lack of food, the lack of medical equipment, uh, the only hospital is not functional in Tamanhint. Uh, and it, the council made it also, some members of the council made it clear that there is a difference between fight against terrorism on one side uh, and just having territorial gains. Uh, I pleaded for the return to politics. Uh, the Libyans uh, and the international community uh, should engage more getting away from military escalation, from violence, and back to politics, back to discuss the amendments of the Libyan political agreement, back to working now on the mechanisms to sit together because only dialogue uh, and uh, peaceful sitting together will be a solution for the problem. There are problems in the political field uh, which can be overcome, I'm very confident. Uh, the military problems uh, only uh, can be uh, solved by a, a real creating a political process once again um, and not having a power vacuum because uh, then those who advocate the military solution uh, will be on the move and the economic problems. Uh, the cooperation between the government of national accord and the central bank of Libya, the national oil company, the sovereign institutions of this country who are administering the wealth uh, has to be strengthened. The um, cooperation has to, made, to be made better uh, in future. Ansmil, uh, myself, we are working tirelessly in order to address all the problems, to um, bring about a political um, breakthrough in uh, discussing the mechanisms uh, here on sitting together to amend the political agreement in some limited points, but also to advocate for um, a peaceful solution and not for a military solution. I'm deeply convinced there is no military solution for the Libyan crisis. Because the men and the women, the young and the old uh, of, uh, of Libya, they suffer from the situation. Everybody wants to have a peaceful life, uh, to live in peace and stability. But the secret is uh, to bring the stakeholders all over the country, in east, west and south, around one table in order to have a common understanding. Uh, to have peace and stability again back in the country for the sake of the Libyan people. Thank you very much. Um, uh, you spoke about uh, some amendments needed uh, on the agreement and the political agreement in order to... Uh, do you have any suggestions in this regard? And what do you think about the... Uh, the uh, trilateral uh, approach by uh, Algeria, Tunisia, and Egypt regarding the finding a solution in, uh, in Libya. Thank you. Well, first of all, it is up to the Libyans to decide. This is a Libyan-owned process, and I'm deeply convinced that if the international community tries to impose solutions, this will not work at the end. It is a Libyan process. What we are doing is that we uh, try to suggest options and to organize a mechanism where, a limited, where limited amendments of the Libyan political agreement can take place. The topics are clearly on the table. This is the composition of the Presidency Council. This is the question, as some uh, say, where the Presidency Council and uh, the government, the Prime Minister, should be separated. But it's above all the question of Article 8. Is it obsolete? Is it not obsolete? This is up to the Libyans uh, to decide. The role of General Haftar. I had the uh, opportunity to see him last Thursday uh, in, in Benghazi. Uh, what is the structure of the national uh, uh, united Libyan army with authority all over the country? Uh, and these are the questions the Libyans have to, to decide. We organize, try to organize the process. We try to organize the mechanism where people are sitting around the table in order to discuss 
these limited amendments. On your second question, uh, the initiative of Tunisia and Algeria and, um, uh, and uh, Egypt to sit together, uh, this is all very welcome. Uh, we welcome any efforts to bring the views of political and military stakeholders closer. Uh, at the end, everybody requests to the UN to put the loose ends together and to invite for this meeting. We are ready for this, uh, for the limited, for a meeting, calling for a meeting uh, of the limited changes uh, of the Libyan political agreement. Um, but the agenda has to be defined before, uh, and I'm very confident that this might happen. That's why these meetings in, the, in New York with the Security Council are very important to see the cohesiveness of the Security Council in the Libya question, uh, the joint approach. Uh, we established the quartet uh, in um, the representatives of the League of Arab States, African Union, European Union, and United Nations uh, to really coordinate our positions. So all initiatives are welcome. All attempts are welcome to bring stakeholders in their views closer together. I'm very grateful for this. But 2017, as I always say, must be the year of decisions, not only of talking or writing papers. The Libyan people deserve action now. The Libyan people are tired in their frustration and sometimes anger with their economic uh, situation that it's really time for decisive action now. And I appeal to all Libyan interlocutors to come around the table uh, and to discuss uh, the problems they are facing. La question des migrants est préoccupante aujourd'hui en Libye. On parle aujourd'hui même d'un marché d'esclaves où les migrants, notamment ouest-africains, sont arrêtés et vendus euh, sur un marché africain. Comment est-ce que vous gérez cette situation voilà, je crois que c'est un crime contre l'humanité d'avoir ce, ce, ces actions de trafficking. La situation des migrants est très, très préoccupante. La situation dans les centres des détentions, les 21 centres de détention sous le contrôle du Conseil présidentiel, mais aussi au dehors du contrôle du Conseil présidentiel, est préoccupant. Moi-même, je, je visite des, euh, des centres de détention. Je vois euh, l'état de, 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 de la santé euh, des... Euh, des hommes et des femmes, nous avons des rapports euh, sur les abus sexuels, euh, même euh, dans quelques centres de détention, et nous avons proposé quelques recommandations au Conseil présidentiel afin d'améliorer, de mitiguer euh, cette situation. Mais les moyens répressifs, c'est seulement, seulement une chose. Il faut adresser les causes profondes. Il faut adresser les questions. Pourquoi les gens euh, de, la, de Somalie, Érythrée, euh, du Sénégal, du Niger, pourquoi est-ce qu'ils lancent leur voyage très dangereux et aboutir à des marchés d'esclaves euh, euh, au, au sud de, de la Libye, euh, à d'autres endroits Il faut adresser ces causes profondes, mais aussi améliorer la situation dans les centres de détention. C'est une des euh, choses que nous faisons et le Bureau de la migration internationale, ils ont des programmes aussi de repatria repatriation euh, dans les pays d'origine. Pour soulager ceux qui se retrouvent dans ces camps de détention. Voilà, euh, comme, comme j'ai dit, nous avons des, des visites régulières dans les, dans les centres. Nous avons proposé des recommandations. Euh, pour le conseil présidentiel de soulager le sort, euh, de, de vérifier euh, qu'on a des, des, des abus des droits de l'homme, des abus sexuels contre, les, contre des femmes qui, qui sont là. Nous avons nos collègues de, de notre section de droits de l'homme euh, qui y vont. Moi-même, euh, je, je, je visite des centres de détention euh, pour euh, essayer ce que nous pouvons faire de soulager le sort euh, de ceux qui, qui sont là et d'organiser des programmes de rapatriation. Euh, nous avons entre 100 et 200 euh, migrants chaque, euh, chaque semaine qui sont rapatriés. Mais alors, on a des milliers de migrants. C'est pourquoi il faut euh, promouvoir ces programmes de rapatriation, mais aussi d'améliorer les situations euh, dans, les, euh, dans les pays d'origine. speech that um, it's time for the UN to lead again in Libya. Um, what do you mean by that? And uh, can it do that in when you see the situation in Libya on the ground? It's descending further and further into conflict and disunity. 
Well, there were many activities of neighboring countries, of the African Union, of the Europeans, of everybody to bring interlocutors closer together. Uh, at the end, everybody requests the United Nations uh, then to put the loose ends together and uh, very concretely to invite them, as we did in the past with the Libyan political dialogue, to invite uh, uh, the group uh, which is emerging now in the House of Representatives and the High State Council. Uh, this will be up to 15 uh, persons. Uh, they are in the process of selection to invite them around the table. Uh, not to interfere, but to provide logistics, to provide maybe also options for decision, to provide the agenda for what has to be discussed, because everybody sees, and there is a growing uh, emerging uh, consensus, uh, that the Libyan political agreement should not be reopened and every sh everything should be rediscussed. No, these are only three, four problems which have to be discussed and uh, this committee, they have to agree on their agenda, then um, we can invite them uh, if they agree and uh, we really can push forward the process of finding a solution for the three, four most urgent problems. Thank you very much.